focused on the mission itself and it's uh, it's always been a, a great relationship we've had with cosmonauts once we get to space it's a you know we're all in the same vehicle we're all operating the same way working toward the same goal and uh, you know it's, it's been amazing to watch Hi, Sarvat from The National. Uh, my question is for Stephen Bowen. If you could talk about what it's been like training with uh, Sultan al Nayadi being from different cultures, what did you learn from him and each other, and how do you think that? Hola, 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 hola. Hola, 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 hola. Noodles. زين لخوض غمار هذه المرحلة نسأل الله التوفيق ودعواتكم لنا. So uh, I'll just say exactly what I said in English. We're really happy to be here today in this historic place, the place where uh, the first man uh, uh, who. Thank you, sir. Timmy Kuchang. This place is a great honor, a great privilege. And um, after the very successful mission of the, uh, the first UA mission to the International Space Station in 2019, when my colleague Hazal Mansouri flew, uh, everybody uh, was happy, everybody was excited. We felt a boost in uh, the uh, space enthusiasm all over the, the region, specifically in the UAE. So this mission is a continuation. Um, this time is gonna be six months, we hope to uh, uh, conduct the mission with the, this awesome crew uh, and come back with the, uh, the, the aims or, uh, or the goals that are uh, planned for it. Thanks so much. Yes, he's space for um, We did miss a little bit of what he said, but um, we do. Se te escucha bien, dice Pierre Valera. Ahora mejor. I think it's going to be uh, really exciting, uh, really interesting. Uh, the first Arab astronaut ever was the uh, Prince Sultan bin Salman. He flew in uh, 85, and then w he was followed by a, a Syrian astronaut in uh, um, um, 87, I believe. Um, Hazza was the, the, the third. I'm going to be having uh, two additional guys meet yeah. the space for, for the first no, no. I think it's going to be really 
um, again, it's it's the for the sake of science, for the sake of uh, uh, spreading the knowledge about how important it is to fly and uh, uh, to uh, push the boundaries of exploration, not only in uh, the leading countries. Our region is also thirsty to learn more, uh, and I think uh, we will be uh, uh, ambassadors in these missions. Hopefully, we can come back with knowledge and. Uh, um, share whatever we learn with everybody. And in terms of the food, I can only probably s say dates. I, I love dates. I'm going to take dates. And hopefully, I'm going to share uh, dates with everybody, especially in Ramadan. Uh, this is a request from the commander, and I cannot say n no to my commander. Hi, Ken Kramer, Space Up Close. Following on that, uh, good luck. I'm a scientist, so I'd like to ask each of you, could you please describe uh, your top science, one or two science experiments you're going you're gonna to be doing on the ISS over the next six months. Thank you. Bueno, hoy tengo tripulación para estar seis meses, como todas. I'll start with the easy ones, which are the ones we're the subjects of. Um, you know, uh, part of being an astronaut, it's, you know, it's awesome to fly in space. It's awesome to be a part of the research and the science. Uh, but we're also the subjects as well. What we learn about ourselves uh, on orbit is really the most exciting thing. I think we tried to volunteer for every one of the projects that we could. Uh, they went back and they filtered out and they figured out what you can do on orbit. So I've got, uh, I can't even remember how to, all of them. But there's diet studies, there's uh, blood studies, there's just an amazing studies. So that's that's the exciting part, just being the subject and being able to contribute as well. So. As Steve said, it's fun to be a subject in the scientific studies ourselves. I'll be eating a modified diet. Um, I'll be eating more fish than usual and some extra lycopene and um, doing some research on diet in space. Um, aside from that, um, like Steve said, we are involved in hundreds of scientific research studies at any, any given time. Um, one that's that I'm pretty excited about is um, if we go outside EVA, we may actually uh, do some sampling on the outside of the space station and start trying to characterize the uh, like micro any uh, biologic samples. Protection mission that at NASA we take very seriously as we think forward to exploration. So just as we've been doing for over 20 years now, ISS as a platform to inform the engineering and operations on our future missions. Seguimos volando entrevista con Tim Dodd. Sinceramente, Tim para mí es el mejor youtuber. No se merece que lo haga pasar un mal rato. Increíblemente, increíblemente nos está esperando. Saben lo orgulloso que me hace sentir todo eso. Lo que estoy mirando realmente es ver el corazón en el espacio. Así que esto es una tecnología de corte de la que un día podemos empezar a 3D printar uh, 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 organs. This is really important to see how the structure is built in microgravity. So this can give us a, a really good insight how these uh, uh, tissues are built. So one of them is uh, testing uh, heart tissues. Uh, we have a lot of material science as well. We're going to test uh, uh, fluidics. We're going to test uh, the materials and how they burn in space. And this is for uh, uh, the future missions when we go into uh, uh, the lunar surface again, or going into another planet. So we need to see the and how they react in microgravity and different uh, atmospheres, let's say, on, on Mars, for example. So a lot of ex excitement. I'm really excited to conduct a lot of science and bueno. communicate uh, what si we're going to back to, to the future. No uh, uh, Tengo parte de un simulador de vuelo. Mis amigos pilotos se pasaron.
космос влияет на человека, как космос влияет на различные материалы, которые находятся в космосе, исследование Земли из космоса, исследование непосредственно космического пространства. Ну, вот это основные такие направления. Well, we have similar experiments uh, on the Russian segment, uh, and uh, we also have uh, joint experiments. Uh, uh, and uh, as I have already mentioned, we have more or less uh, the same uh, scientific program. And uh, the experiments that we conduct uh, on the Russian segment uh, could be divided into several groups. Uh, uh, basically, uh, we study how the space environment affects uh, human beings, uh, how it affects different materials uh, in space, uh, and uh, also we do Earth uh, studies uh, and uh, studies of uh, the space itself. And this is more or less it. Thank you. All righty, we have time for about one more question. Um, you can step up and ask the final question. Uh, Scott Hadler, West 2, uh, NBC Orlando. Um, for Pilot Hobart, um, now that we're seeing the, the seventh Drew um, Dragon crew capsule being used, the seventh time, I should say, do you get briefing notes or do you have conversations with the previous pilots? And is that specific to each capsule or is that kind of general how they maneuver? In other words, like I would imagine that pilots for airplanes, they talk about this certain aircraft versus that certain aircraft. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's been one of the coolest parts of all our training. Um, we actually our capsule, um, Endeavour, this will be the fourth crewed flight of Endeavour. So Endeavour flew on Demo 2, flew on Crew 2, the Axiom 1 mission, and then will be the fourth crewed flight. Um, but to get to your question, um, we have a chance to talk with previous crews that have flown Dragon, and it doesn't really matter which capsule we flew on, they're all o operationally quite similar. and. I think it's really interesting because uh, you know within the crew we come up with our own what we call CRM crew resource management and um, kind of figure out what works for us as a crew, um, and that's you know myself and Steve, but then also Sultan and Andre are a huge part of that. So when we train, for example, um, emergencies um, out at Hawthorne, um, the whole crew, all four of us, come together to organize the capsule. And for example, if we're training for something like an emergency deorbit, everybody has a really big part role in pulling that together. Each crew is slightly different in how we choose to manage that, but the conversations with previous NASA crews have been really informative for helping to establish that CRM and figure out what worked for uh, previous crews. Thank you, and that's gonna conclude the Q&A portion for media. I will tell the crew, um, I want you guys to stick around for a photo op after this, and I'm gonna turn it back over to the Deputy Director of the Kennedy Space Center, uh, Kelvin, Kelvin Manning. So again, thank you so much for joining us to welcome Crew 6, Steve, Woody, Sultan, and Andre. Uh, we look forward to a beautiful launch next week and a successful mission. So until then, go NASA, go SpaceX, go Crew NASA. 9, go Crew Dragon, and go Crew 6. Go Crew 6, Dragon, Falcon, todos. Con esto termina. Y terminamos, obviamente. Me encanta. Me encanta estar con ustedes. Vamos a ver si puedo mejorar la voz. Me voy a poner eso. Así que bueno, con esto amigos, un abrazo enorme, terminamos. Nos vemos en la próxima. Lo quiero muchísimo. Un abrazo. Un abrazo enorme. Escuti, te transportame por favor. <risa>